Hi, it's Wednesday, June 10th, 2020. My name is Noah Seely, and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about machine learning topic that isn't visualization. I'm not sure if the last video concludes our visualization series, but for now I'm going to take a break and explore some new areas of machine learning. The area that I want to delve into today and work as with a new series is called reinforcement learning. There's a ton of research going on in reinforcement learning as we speak, so I do think it's a very good time to start to look at it, especially if you have an interest in the area of robotics. So I realized I didn't actually do this type of video for visualization, but I thought it would be good today to just take some time and kind of introduce ourselves into reinforcement learning. As I said, there's a ton of research and papers that I want to go over soon, but today I think it's a good idea that we just get into starting to understand and have a conversation about reinforcement learning. So I found a pretty good blog post by Chris Nicholson at pathmind.com that covers a really good intro to reinforcement learning. So I'm going to base my discussion on the topics discussed in this post. Of course, I won't be covering everything in that post in this video or as in depth at all. So if you want to check it out more after this video, I've linked this article in the description below. So without any further delay, Let's go over some reinforcement learning. So the article starts off by discussing how reinforcement learning is revolutionizing modern AI, kind of in a similar way that the visualization models we looked at in previous videos were changing their specific realm of machine learning. Basically, reinforcement learning functions through movement and actions in a given environment and learns through feedback on those movements and actions. In its simplest form, it's kind of like training a dog. He gets a treat when he does something good and gets punished when he does something bad. Unlike your dog though, reinforcement learning has so far reached massive heights, being able to maximize scores in games such as Dota 2, StarCraft, AlphaGo, and various Atari games. It also has various implementations, one, for example, having delayed rewards for better learning. This post mentions that those accomplishments may seem meaningless to those outside of gaming communities, but in actuality, the models that are trained on games may also have huge implications and application to real-life robotics, which could significantly contribute to the progression of modern society. So now that we have a rough idea of what reinforcement learning is, let's discuss some of its vocabulary. The post we're following may go a bit more in-depth with these definitions, or have a few more than I do, but I'm trying to just cover which definitions I think are really important to every reinforcement learning model as we slowly introduce them. So the first definition I want to look at is what's known as the agent. So the agent is kind of the main character of each iteration of the algorithm. It's what's navigating through the environment, deploying each action, and learning which are good to use within the constraints of the model. So it's almost as if the model is some sort of all-encompassing god, and the agent is simply an individual moving and learning how to survive within the environment set by the model. The next definition is action. So actions are movements and interactions the agent can make within the environment. This may mean moving the paddle up and down in a game of Pong, or running to an item vendor in Dota 2 and purchasing the correct items given the current context of the situation. Usually there's a predetermined set list of actions which the agent is able to choose from. The next definition is environment. The environment is the actual environment which the agent moves around and interacts with as we've mentioned before. The environment will typically take the agent and its actions in as an input and return a reward or punishment depending on the implementation of the given model. So after that comes state. The state is the current situation of the agent at that very moment. States can include the agent, their position in the environment, any rewards they have access to, and perhaps possible movements or actions that they can make. Usually states and actions will be paired together in order to visualize which actions can change the current state and the state that will be the result of that action. And by result here, I mean it's reward or punishment. So speaking of reward, that's the next definition. The reward is used to quantify the agent's performance during its specific run or iteration in its environment. For example, say we are running a reinforcement model in the game of Doom, perhaps the agent is rewarded points when it kills an enemy or captures a specific objective. The significance of the reward and when it is rewarded is a hyperparameter of the model itself and may determine how the agent learns to navigate through its environment. An agent will commonly work towards using actions or movements that give them rewards in order to maximize their performance score, this behavior can do just as much harm as good. As we delve deeper into the development of these models, we must be aware of when the rewards are deployed to the agent and why. And the last definition I want to go over is policy. The policy can be thought of kind of an agenda for the agent. The policy will be deployed with the agent in some models, known as policy models, in order for the agent to have some reference in the environment they are navigating within. The policy itself will map states to actions, usually implemented as some sort of probability distribution, where the agent is able to sample an action from that distribution given its current state. As the agent learns which actions in which states lead to better rewards, there will be a higher probability 
of the agent sampling those more profitable actions. At this point, I invite you to pause the video and go back to any point which the definitions kind of seemed a little fuzzy. I'd also recommend checking out the article for further explanation as it's very important to be familiar with these concepts as we go on. Once you've reviewed them and everything makes sense to you, we can move on to how these definitions interact with each other within the model. So the basis of most reinforcement learning models is that an action will follow this sequential chain of events. For some models, this is an actual Markov chain as it will only take input of only the directly previously output made by the model, but we'll see more of that later. The important takeaway here is that the agent will take an action and use that as input into the environment. The environment is usually a function that will return some sort of output back to the agent, depending on its input, that represents the reward and new state of the agent, dependent on its action. This algorithm will loop around and around until the game is over, regardless of if the agent won or lost. So now that we know the vocabulary and saw the algorithm, the whole point of reinforcement learning is to basically maximize that return from the environment function so that the reward is super high. So from that, we can kind of see how the agent will learn how to adjust its actions, perhaps sampled from a policy, depending on its environment in order to maximize its reward. Really think about that and make sure you understand what it means as I believe that's basically the essence of reinforcement learning. So there you have it. I think I'm gonna stop the video there as we've covered a lot today. And I think we've reached the objective of giving a very rough introduction to reinforcement learning based on that PathMind post. Moving forward, I plan to show off a lot of reinforcement learning papers and research that's been going on to help us learn a lot more about this topic. I may even make another video finishing off what's left in the post that we reviewed today. Like I said, the author, Chris Nicholson, goes much more into depth on the topic in that post. So as always, I've linked all resources that I've used in the description below for you guys to check out yourselves. If you feel that I've missed anything or got anything wrong, please let me know in the comment section below. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.